Yes. Mm -hmm. But the other is, that's when you consider that the average home has tens of thousands of items. Sure. That one item a day. Right. You know, is is going to put a small dent in. It's not going to put much of a dent in it either. And I will tell you, this is something very, uh, it was very interesting about Clutter is Anonymous to me is that I was with a client of mine who did go to a Clutter's Anonymous conference. Mm -hmm. And what baffled me was that she came home with a set of CDs. Yeah. And all kinds of paperwork. Mm -hmm. So it, they were kind of helping to pe perpetuate the cluttering and the hoarding. That was a little peculiar to me. Right. Well, if I would say that if these CDs were specific to decluttering. And th they were. Yeah. So, you see, th this, is, this is when you said earlier about difficult to discern. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the definitions of abstinence is um, acquire no new clutter. Right. Okay. Right. And then you have to, therefore, ask yourself the question when you're purchasing something. Is mm -hmm. this clutter or not? And it's it's not clutter if it has a particular use. You have a place for it, and it will be used or given away if you purchase it for someone. Um, and you you know can store it for the next season or so. Right. But um, so that that's important because many of my clients will tell me they don't know the difference between needs and wants. You know, do I really need this? Do right. I do I want it? Right. And right. I I tell them that they have a right to their wants, mm. and okay. that we 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 are we are entitled to just have mm -hmm. things because we want them because we're they're they're interesting they're fun they right. make us feel good right. however the proviso is do we have a place for them right do we have room right. for them right will we will we know where they are if it's a aesthetic if it's something of beauty right as you said earlier you know right. will it be displayed right Right. Right. And if it's something of usefulness, will it be used? Right. And, and yeah. Yeah. And many times they'll say, yes, I will use this at some point in the future. Right. And when I push my clients on that point, I say, well, at what point in the future? And they get very defensive, which is understandable. Right. And I'm encouraging them to really think, well, am I going to use this in six months, a year, 20 years? Yeah. They, they need to think about that. Right. And it's not an easy thing because you are, in some ways, attacking how they live their lives. Right. Right. It's, and it's all a very, very, it, you, I'm walking a tightrope. Yes. In that regard. Yes. And... It does happen that my clients, after a couple weeks or whatever, say, I can't work with you. Mm -hmm. I'll say, okay. Yeah. And either they're just not at the point where they're ready, or it becomes too overwhelming for them. And when I'm helping them to clean or declutter, I do say to them, look, I can't guarantee that we won't get rid of something that's important. I can't guarantee that. However, try to look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. That are you getting rid of one phone number you might need in the future that you could certainly find on the internet somewhere? Are you taking that over having a clean house that's going to bring other mm -hmm. wonderful things into your life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that involves risk and taking a chance. Yes. And the way I put it to my clients is that for me myself, why did I specialize in this field? Because I've had this, this inkling myself. I, I'm i not a minimalist. I'll never be a minimalist. Um, right. I love the, the, the cozy kind of 
home and I think of of cluttering like as a um, adult equivalent of swaddling. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of being swaddled and and a feeling feeling safe as you said, a cocoon, a a refuge. Exactly. Um there was um we were talking about it and uh it it is it's it's a very safe place and most of us have this to a degree. Mm Mm-hmm. It's it's exactly right. Um you know, I'm I'm not an ascetic at all. My mother is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My mother lives with very little. Mm-hmm. She's the exception. Mm-hmm. Um, but we all have items in our homes that we feel an emotional attachment to. Yes. And clutterers and hoarders take it to an extreme. Mm-hmm. Right. They anthropomorphize things. Mm-hmm. Now, I will tell you, I have a collection of stuffed animals that I have completely anthropomorphized. Mm-hmm. They have names. They have personalities. They talk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. The difference is that I can navigate the rooms of my apartment. My living room is used as a living room. My dining room is used as a dining room. My bedroom is used as a bedroom. Mm-hmm. It's not used as a place for my stuff. Mm-hmm. So it really is a matter of degree. Right. And another uh, way of looking at it is that we attach um, a sentimental value to it also, to something. And most of us have things in our homes that are sentimental values. Mm -hmm. Um, A a vase that our grandmother owned Mm -hmm. or anything like that. And so let's say you choose an item in your home that you have a sentimental attachment to. If you're, somebody you were living with just was so tired of it and hated it and couldn't live with it anymore, got rid of it, you would feel um, attacked. Yes. And with hoarders and clutterers, they take that to an extreme. Right. Uh, and the, the word anthropomorphized comes from the word anthropology. In other words, we, we humanize these objects. Exactly. So that it's, it's almost as if you're cutting off an arm or a leg, a limb. Absolutely. I'm like, I'm an amputee. I'm losing a limb. Absolutely. If I have to get rid of this. Absolutely. Yes. yes. And I'm giving these things a good home. Right. I am I am their steward. Right. These things will not have a good home if I don't have a home for it. Right. Yes, and and I agree with you that clutterers have have many things in common and mm-hmm. um if you look at the profile of the clutterer, they they you talked about creativity before. Right. And right. they are very caring and yeah. um they are very respectful. And they do like to conserve, and yes. they do like possibilities and to yes. re- refunction things. Yes. And if this is on this planet and somebody made it, and it has a use, and mm-hmm. if I can't use it, and this is what I say to my clients, well, other people might be able to use it as well. Yes. And for instance, you talked about clothing earlier. Mm-hmm. That clothing and paper are the two items that people tend to clutter the most. Mm-hmm. Sure. And yes, so you can look at clothing as in three basic categories. We have our friends, we have our acquaintances, and we have our strangers. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'm going to use that. Oh, good. I good. love that. Yes. <laughs> so I would, you know, give a, give a stranger to someone else because that stranger to you could be a friend to someone else. Oh, I love that analogy. Yeah. Good. And, and I have actually even even let go of some of my acquaintances. When I, when I, you know, something I, you know, I wear once in a blue moon right. because I right. say to myself, I wear this once in a blue moon. Right. It is perfectly fine. And I'm sure someone could get really a lot of use out of it. It's true. And then there's also the 80-20 rule. Oh, yeah. Uh, 80% of what you wear comes from 20% of your wardrobe. That's right. 
And uh, I have a client now, a hoarder, and what's interesting, we, we were talking about some of the characteristics is that they also have difficulties making decisions. Oh, yes. Very much. They're great difficulties. And I noticed in working with her, whenever I go over, she wears the same top every time. Mm-hmm. So that's, it was informational to me. Mm-hmm. It wasn't judgmental. Right. It was informational. I thought to myself, okay, decision making is one of her blind spots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you have difficulty making decisions, you tend to make the same ones over and over again. Well, I don't know if I should wear the, the red top or the blue top, so I'll wear the green top again. Mm-hmm. So you can't decide. Right. So indecisiveness is definitely on the on the profile. Yes. And you can dis- one can describe clutter as um, just uh, just piles of indecisions. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. And it's a, it's there's so much fear. Right. There's a great deal of fear. I might need this. Right. I might need this at some point. Right. And there's so much out there on the internet that you can find immediately. Right. And they they only see what they have and you know it, and then the dichotomy is out of sight out of mind. So uh-huh. people, you know, in clearing out, we will find often money. Mhm. Um things that they have been looking for for many years. Mhm. And there it is, right? There, there it is. is. Oh, I've been looking for yes, that. Yes, yes, yes. And my feeling is, well, if you haven't needed it in five years, you're not going to. But that's not how they think. Right. I, I rediscovered this, so now it's I can use it again. Now I reclaim it. Exactly. Exactly. I'll use it. I'll use it at some point. I might need it. They yes. Keep, it's the possibilities. I And... The idea of scarcity and fear that I won't be able to generate the the income, the power, the energy Absolutely. to replace it. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I can understand that we sure. all we're all aging. Yet, what? How much? How much cubicle space do we have? Exactly. And you know the reality check. Right, and I did mention that to one of my clients. I said to her point blank, I said. If you live another 120 years, you won't use everything you have. Yes. Putting numbers on things is very, very good. Yes. So, Amy Schaefer Crawley, I cannot believe this show is over. Oh, no. <laughs> I had such a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so, how can, how can people get in touch with you? And do you have a certain... Um, uh, geography that you that you work with. A I'm certain... in the New York City area. Okay, New York City area. New York City area, uh, maybe into Nassau County, Long Island. Okay. Um, and they can find me. I have a website. Okay. Um, aggressivelyhelpful.biz. dot biz. Mm. Yep, I'm a bit of a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> Aggressivelyhelpful. Dot, dot biz. biz. Correct. B i z. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Aggressively helpful dot biz. You got it. That's wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, thank you so much, Amy Schaefer Crawley. And this is Dr. Duffy Spencer saying goodbye for now and wishing you great relationships. <laughs>